Career, politics, what matters to most people? Well, according to the Pew Research Center, family, and to a certain extent, tradition. This story says where Americans find meaning in life, economic, religious, and political divides shape where Americans find meaning, but family, career, and friendship emerge as common themes. What makes life meaningful? Answering such a big question might be challenging for many people. Even among researchers, there is little consensus about the best way to measure what brings human beings satisfaction and fulfillment. Traditional survey questions with a, re with a pre-specified set of response options may not capture important sources or meaning. Now, this video is not entirely about people finding meaning in family, but there's a reason why I bring this up first. Most people, I would, I would uh, believe, even feminists, still hold innate desires. Now, many people may say that's just not true, it's, or maybe it's social conditioning, whatever the, whatever the issue. But Pew shows us that family is the overwhelming majority of what gives people meaning. Career is second, money is third. Wow, money gives people meaning, that's, that's unfortunate. Activities, hobby, hope, hope. I don't see politics within here. So it's interesting then that politics is so prevalent. But I don't want to focus on how people believe their family is the most important thing. I want to focus on this story. This is actually from yesterday. Feminists think sexist men are sexier than woke men. Why would that be? Why do women find sexist men appealing? This is from Psychology Today from Dr. David L. Dr. J. Dr. Oh my God. Dr. David J. Lay. And it says women who stray, whatever that means. He says, women like bad boys, at least. That's the story. And there's a lot of writing and anecdotal experience to back that up. Men frequently complain about being friend-zoned. The idea being that men who are respectful toward their female interest get placed into the role of a friend rather than a potential boyfriend. The pickup artist community has embraced this concept, teaching men how to behave in assertive, dominant ways that allegedly are more successful with women. Many of these concepts and dynamics themselves have been called sexist and misogynistic, reflecting underlying beliefs that women owe men sex. The incel community, a group of online males who complain bitterly, violently, and angrily about being involuntarily celibates, attack women for choosing alpha males rather than softer, kinder men like themselves. Now, there's a reason why I opened with the story about family, because I think that there is something to why we have family structures. It's almost like evolutionary biology is real. And to a certain extent, even feminists do want a domineering, like a, a man who is going to show you he is powerful enough to provide resources, to protect you. Look, there are certain things that drive men and women. And there are certain tropes in society. Some people say these tropes are false. Maybe they are. I don't know. Maybe they're societally generated. Maybe they're inherent. I don't know. But I can say at least right now, no matter what it is, we have... Evidence to suggest that feminists still want guys who are considered sexist. And I don't know, look, I want to, I wanna, let's talk a little bit about the incel stuff. Often guys who are nice guys aren't nice guys at all. They're creepy weirdos who get mad because they don't get any. But there is a big issue here that I think it's fair to say. Guys who try to act overly nice and I, I don't know how to describe it, but look, be yourself, be real, be assertive, and treat a woman the way you would treat anyone else. What I often find with these people who are friend-zoned or, or, or incels or whatever is that they try and treat women as though they're special. They're not. They're regular people. You should treat them that way. If I have a candy bar, and it's my candy bar, and I don't want to share my candy bar, I'm not going to share my candy bar, plain and simple. But I know a lot of people who are these nice guy types who get friend-zoned, who fawn over women and try and put them on a pedestal. That doesn't necessarily work, necessarily, because this article is talking about benevolent sexism to an extent, but it's talking about how, here, I'll just read it. Women who admit to liking bad boys, being attracted to men who are assertive or dominant, are sometimes criticized as having internalized misogynistic attributes or simply as naive and foolish, failing to recognize or admit that sexism is damaging. During the 2016 presidential campaign, female fans of then-candidate Trump proudly invited their candidate to grab them by the hoo-hoo, if you know what I mean, following release of tapes of Trump discussing grabbing women without consent. This is actually factually untrue. You can dispute what Trump said by all means, but there is a dispute. Some people say it was without consent. However, I believe Trump said, they let you do whatever you want. Key to this phrase being, let you do. Now, this is where the dispute comes in. Do I defend Trump's behavior? Oh, no, of course not. You guys know I don't like the guy. But I do think it's fair to say 
that if women are letting men do things, that implies consent. However, feminists see it the other way. You need affirmative consent, enthusiastic consent. Women have to say, please do this. So, so that's where there's a difference in the ideology. And, you know, it's, it's, I always say this stuff, but, you know, for whatever reason, the right seems to understand there's a difference in perspective, but the left doesn't seem to care. They're like, ah, you know, how dare you say that? Anyway, these women were proclaimed traitors to other women or decried as simply deluded. Others have suggested that women may choose bad boy types in order to acquire protection from other more aggressive and hostile men, a theory referred to as the protection racket. Some simply suggest that sexism is insidious and that these dynamics infiltrate our choice without us noti- noticing. And it's interesting that they have this, uh, this image of the man over the woman, but I do think tropes exist for a reason. Stereotypes exist for a reason because people notice patterns. I don't think stereotyping, I, I don't like the idea of stereotyping people. However, people notice things and then these stereotypes come to be and I think we should do what we can to try and resist stereotyping people. But I also think it's fair to say that With evolutionary biology being a fact, it is entirely possible that men and women are innately driven to certain things. Maybe they can be socially conditioned away from it, or maybe it is social conditioning itself. But I do think it's fair to say that, at least in my experience, women do like bad boys. And and bad boys doesn't mean disrespectful. It doesn't mean mean. It means tough, assertive, charismatic. And it's exactly what you'd expect. I feel like a lot of people who are, you know, friend-zoned think women like jerks, like mean people. No, 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 no. To an extent. But I think, you know, what I've noticed is that women like guys who are assertive and confident. I think that's fair because that's something everybody seems to notice. Now, don't get me wrong. Intersectional feminists will absolutely denounce this idea. And they'll, like they mentioned in the article, call it internalized misogyny. But there's a reason, again, why I bring up the, the Pew Research thing, that family is so important to people. Because evolutionary biology has resulted in, look, we're, we're, we're very similar to most of the life on the planet. Life has inherent characteristics. We strive to reproduce. If family wasn't the number one reason, then we wouldn't exist because over time, we prioritize things other than our own reproduction and then there would be no one left because we die. So that, the point, I, I'm, how I'm trying to connect this, the point I'm trying to make is, is, is it true that feminists like sexist, uh, think sexist men are sexier than woke men? It may be, because even if in your mind you have certain political philosophies and certain ideas, there may be something that drives people to seek out what is most successful. Because uh, evolutionary biology is a real thing. Uh, it, I don't believe that it means that everything we do is determined by our biology. I think that's called biological essentialism or something like that. What I think it means is that We are constantly at odds with a drive within us. Because if humans prioritized things that weren't successful, they wouldn't succeed. So think about, you know, go way back in time to like caveman times, you know, people living in the middle of nowhere. Think about two men. One guy is big, not necessarily ripped or anything, maybe just well-fed, maybe fat, maybe, maybe he's ripped, maybe he's strong, and he's kind of mean and assertive and says, here's what you have to do and here's why you do it and don't talk back and the women choose this man. Well, it's likely this guy can be decisive and take quick action and defend the family and provide resources. But think about the inverse. A man who is short, weak, frail, and timid. Well, when danger you know, arises, is that man going to be able to defend the family? I th- so I'm not saying, look, I'm not an evolutionary biologist or anything like that. I could be wrong. I'm just you know, talking basically off the top of my head. But you think about where that leads. It leads to, to humans before a society has even developed all life to seek out something that can provide and be protective and be strong. Granted, there are other you know, ways that uh, life can survive, but this becomes a big, uh, a big part of it. And then it's not surprising to see that even people who identify as feminists will end up wanting bad boys. These are complex, highly politicized dynamics that foster conflicts and finger pointing between the genders. Unfortunately, research suggests that women do in fact find sexist men attractive. Gull and Kupfer recently published research where they conducted multiple experiments testing women's attraction to different types of men and teasing out women's motivations. Past research has suggested that evolutionary biology explains these dynamics pointing to findings that women reportedly prefer men with more masculine features and more indicators of fitness. However, many of those sensational findings are in question, with failed replications leading to doubt that these effects can be reliably predicted or measured. Gull and Kupfer take a related tack, but head in a significantly different direction. They suggest that female interest in sexist men, specifically men who display benevolent sexism, 
may be seen by women as being more interested in investing resources in women. Essentially, when they talk about putting women on a pedestal, you have to imagine a guy who's strong, charismatic, and treats the woman down, right? It's, it's, it's not as though he treats her that he's, he, he treats her in a way that he's better than her. I think this is a mischaracterization when they show this photo of the man kissing her legs. But it's the idea that a man will think he's better, faster, stronger, smarter, and must do what he can to protect the woman. And thus, he does treat her like she's more important. But he also thinks he must protect her at all costs and make that decision for himself, not her decision. So they essentially talk about this, but let's, let's go down to after they, you know, basically explain. Gull and Kupfer conducted several separate experiments showing that the results did replicate in different samples and using different methods, and that the effect was apparent both, uh, apparent both potential mates and, and in work, uh, work colleagues. Even in men who were not being scoped out as potential intimate partners, women were more likely to see sexist men as more attractive. Women who were both more and less feminist displayed similar levels of attraction to sexist men. So this effect isn't the result of women not being woke enough. One of the experiments tested whether women's ratings of sexist men varied depending on cues about there being more hostile men around from whom the woman might need protection. But here again, women's attraction towards sexist men wasn't influenced by a potential need for safety from other hostile men. We'll just jump down to the, to the end here. I look forward to future research which might explore men's own perceptions of their attitudes towards women. Do men who hold benevolent sexist beliefs recognize that they may increase their attractiveness while also potentially being seen as patronizing. But for now, perhaps this research can help us stop attacking sexist men as being misogynistic tools of the patriarchy and recognize that these social dynamics exist due to the choices of both men and women for reasons other than power, hatred, or control. Yes, because biology does play a role in how we behave to a certain degree. To, to what degree? I don't know, but I think it's fair to say that, look, we have to eat food, right? So we get hungry. It's plain and simple. There are things we do because of our biology. To what degree? Again, no idea. It could be very little. It could be base. It could just be food and, and sleeping. Who knows? But I'm not surprised to find the research suggests this at all. Though I will be, uh, I will not, I will also not be surprised when everyone gets offended by it. Anyway, I'm done. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys tomorrow on the main channel at four.